long ago, I uploaded a video on how to create combo systems with melee attacks, but I never went on explaining how to create the collisions that will actually clash with the enemy, so we'll do that today. Not only that, but this tutorial will focus on Godot users that utilize animated sprite in favor of the arguably more popular animation player. There's already a great tutorial on melee attacks using animation player made by Kids Can Code. So in the case that you would rather go for that, I'll link his video down in the description. Well, without further introduction, let's get started. Now then, let's get started. As you might see here, we already have some assets and some scenes in, in my project. I'll explain them right now. Uh, first, we have a kinematic body 2D called Model CX, an animated sprite and a collision shape attached to it, as well as a script. If we open the script, its mere basics is movement and animations. The animations are tied to animated sprite, and animated sprite currently has three animations. Idle, slash, and walk. Right now, in our code, only walk and idle are being used. Slash will be explained later, because that's pretty much the point of the tutorial. And Collision Shape 2D... Uh, let me change this real quick. Okay. Collision Shape 2D is just the collision of our player. Then we have a test scene that if we run it, it will just play the script of our character, which is basic stuff, so yeah. Uh, if you're in for this tutorial, I'm guessing that you would have knowledge of how to make basic movement and basic animations with animated sprite. So now we're going to add the animation I talked about, which is slash. And for that, we're going to go first into project settings, input map, and we're going to add an action, which is going to be called attack. We're going to link a key to the action, which will be X. And when I press the key X, uh, my player, my character, will perform the slash animation. We're gonna put that in code now by going into the script and for, as I explained in one of my videos earlier, for our slash code not to interfere with our other movement scripts, we gotta add a variable which is going to be called is attacking and it'll be false by default. Uh, this variable will confirm when the player presses X. And we gotta add it to the rest of our code of movement so it doesn't interfere with our attack and vice versa. So if input dot is action pressed right, movement x equals speed. So here we gotta add another condition which is and is attacking equals false. Now we're going to copy that into the left one. And here, uh, for the idle one, else, if movement uh, dot x equals zero, if is attacking equals false, animated sprite will play idle. Now, we gotta add our slash code. So, if input is action just pressed attack, animated sprite dot play slash and 
is attacking equals true. Now we go, whoops, here test scene, now we go and press X and it performs the animation, but we can't move anymore. And for that, uh, for us being able to move again, uh, we gotta make its attacking false again. Doing such thing is simple. We gotta go into the signals of animated sprite in node animation finished. Uh, we're gonna do as if as when the animation of slash finishes, uh, its attacking will go back into being false. So we'll connect the the signal to the kinematic body, and we're gonna write if uh, function on animated sprite animation finished if animation no if animated sprite the animation equals slash is attacking equals false let's test this now we go, we can move right now, we press X, it finish, and we can move again. So, very simple stuff. Uh, we can attack how many times we want, and we'll be able to move, always. Now that we have the animation, we gotta make it work, we gotta do some damage. So, we go into the kinematic body, and we'll link an area to the it will call it will be called uh, attack collision this attack collision will have a collision shape of itself and this attack collision uh, the collision shape of the attack collision you know what I'll change this to attack area <laughs> to make it less confusing. The collision shape of attack area has to match the sword uh, presented within the animated sprite animation. So we got to the frame, this frame looks big enough for us to have an approximate of the, of the size of the sword. This collision of attack area has to pretty much, not exactly of course, but it has to match the, the whole sprite that the sword covers. So, uh, this attack area obviously won't be uh, activated all the time, so we gotta present that in code. Just let me. Okay. We gotta link it to is attacking. So here we gonna say function on animated sprite animation finished if animated sprite animation equals slash attack area collision shape 2d disabled and when we press attack if input is action just press attack animated sprite dot play slash is attacking true and attack area collision shape 2d disabled Uh, for this, let's go into the debug, mo debug mode and to just be able that everyone, uh, that everything is, to be able to see <laughs> that everything is working right, we gotta go for this option, visible collision shapes. So, we're going to play this now. 
Okay, right now the collision seems to be activated no matter what, so that means I did something wrong. Oops. Okay, I figured out the mistake. I used two equal signs instead of one. So I apologize about that, it was a stupid mistake. Uh, now, if we run this, uh, we have the collision active in the beginning, we press we press X and it disables. So, uh, how do we get rid of uh, this collision to be activated in the beginning? That's simple, we go to attack area, collision shape, and disabled by default. So, now if we run this, it's disabled. We press X and it will be only activated at the time we press X. So, very simple stuff. But even if the collision is activated or not, it won't do any damage. And I'll prove it by creating an enemy right now. Now that we have an enemy in our scene, you'll notice that if we approach this enemy and press X, nothing will happen to it. How do we fix that? First, let's take a look into the code of the enemy. So, we go to Metor and Script, and you'll see a very basic code with a variable that it's called dead, which is false, and a line that says, if dead equals false, animated sprite will play idle. This line of code is pretty explanatory, and what we want to do is that our sword in the scene of our main player collides with the enemy. So we gotta take a look to attack area. Why is attack area important and why did we create attack area? Remember that attack area holds collision shape 2D. The collision for the sword and our kinematic body has the collision of the player. Now, we'll create, we'll go into the no, node tab and we'll create a group in attack area that will be called the sword. The reason as of why we're creating this group into attack area and not module CX is because since we're adding this group into attack area, only attack area will react with an enemy and we don't want model CX or the collision of model CX to react the way that attack area would. To put it likely, uh, or to put it simply, we want attack area to kill the enemy. And if we added sword to our main character, every time our character touched the enemy, the enemy would die. When in most video games, when you touch an enemy, you're the one that is drawing the help from. So, the last thing we're gonna do now is go to our enemy script and we're gonna link, we're going to go into area, signals, and use the signal on area enter. We'll connect it to the enemy and here, function mature area entered area. Uh, the important reason as of why attack area must be a node of area 2D is because then we can use this signal to link both areas, the area of the enemy and the area of attack area which is our collision shape for our sword. So, we gotta now write if area is in group 
sword dead will be true animated sprite dot play destroyed and we're gonna use another signal for animated spread. This one is optional though. On animation finish, if animated sprite animation equals destroyed, Q3. I say that this one is optional because if you have an animation for the enemy being destroyed, then you gotta use it, but if you don't, then you just type Q3 here. Since I have an animation, I have to use this signal here. Let's try this now. So we run the scene, here's the enemy, we press X, and it's destroyed. So yeah, it was pretty simple. I'm sorry if I made it really long, but I hope it helped. And thanks for watching.